G'day, Neil here from Player One Sim Gear, and we are back with another Pimax Crystal video. This time we're looking at Microsoft Flight Simulator. We've had the Crystal for a couple of days now, and we've been diving into Microsoft Flight Simulator and trying to find a build or a set of settings that we're really comfortable with in terms of the performance and also the stability. I think we're there now, and I wanted to share with you what those settings are, both in Microsoft Flight Simulator itself and also in OpenXR Toolkit. So before we take a look, I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who jumped on and supported our last Pimax Crystal video. The video has been going great. We really appreciate all the really good positive comments. I'll link to that video below. Please feel free to check that out if you haven't already. Let us know what additional Pimax Crystal content you'd like to see. Big thanks to everyone who commented, including Steve, VR Flight Sim Guy. We appreciate you dropping in and checking it out as well. We've been watching your videos since you started, so thank you very much. It's great to see you popping in and saying g'day. Steve's a legend. If you haven't checked out his footage, I'll post that on the link below as well. All right, so let's dive in now. So what we've done here is I've taken uh, essentially a screen grab of the, the two screen output that Microsoft Flight Simulator gives when you're in VR. We've sort of captured that and you can see here the double screen mode and we'll drop it down now into a single screen mode. Okay, so we're jumping into my favorite aircraft in the game actually, which is the Cub Crafters X Cub. It's such a cool little aircraft to fly. It feels like it goes everywhere and I've been using it on bush trips since I started with Microsoft Flight Simulator. So I thought what we would do is check out my home country of New Zealand. And we're starting off in one of the most beautiful parts of the world, which is down near Queenstown in the South Island of New Zealand. So the purpose of this video is to show what level of detail we can get to on the Pimax Crystal and a 3080 Ti when we aim for a steady 50 frames per second in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So feel free to sit back, take a look at how it went, or jump ahead and check out the settings we used in OpenXR and the settings we had in Microsoft Flight Simulator as well. Now the most noticeable thing flying over a built up area like Queenstown here is the definition of the individual buildings. So I'm getting no shimmering coming off the building textures and it's really clearly defined individual buildings and all the trees and the roads and the different infrastructure between them. It all comes across in really sharp clarity and detail, much more so than I've had from other headsets. Okay, let's take a quick look at the OpenXR Toolkit settings. You can see I've turned off the upscaling or sharpening, so that's the, the NIS, the FSR, and the CAS modes. They're all off, and also Turbo Mode is turned off as well. I got pretty good results with Turbo Mode on the previous headsets, but on this one it seemed to cause some flickering for me, so it worked much better and was a lot smoother with it turned off. I didn't need to adjust any of the appearance settings, obviously it looks great as it is. In terms of the system, what I have done is turned the resolution down, as you might have seen from some other um, reviews as well, talking about you wanted to lower the resolution as it stands by default it's projecting out really high sort of out of the box and so if you use the resolution override here you can turn it down a bit and get a lot better frames so I'm running uh, 2698 by 3192 again it varies you get different mileage on, on you know how where you want to scale down to I couldn't really see much difference anywhere around this 26 sort of 27 kind of mark either in terms of it looked great I couldn't really see much difference in terms of the way it performed either so I just sort of settled on 2698 by 3192 again let me know which one works for you you know individual results may vary but I think as long as you've got it around this point you're going to be great you're going to see good resolution and get great frame rate as well The terrain is also really well represented in the Pimax Crystal, so the detail of the terrain as you're flying over is really sharp and it's a very high contrast picture that's created of the different terrain types as you go over them. Particularly the trees as well, the trees are rendered really well, although I'll come back and fly again over a more wooded area in a different, a different clip so you'll be able to see that in more detail. But you can see here looking at the terrain how sharp it is and how the different contrasts of the different farmland and the, the different dirt types and the different rocks etc, they're all rendered really clearly and it's very easy to see and again it's a real pleasure to fly over. So 
So one of the key selling points of the Pimax crystal is its ability to provide local dimming. And what that means in a flight sim setting is that you get blacker blacks and brighter highlights. Now the that's really evident in Microsoft Flight Simulator when you're flying through inclement weather or through changing light conditions. And I sort of captured that a little bit on this flight, but I'll go back and do that in more detail and really highlight that. But take it from me, as the weather changed and you had light beams coming through the clouds, you had periods of shadow and periods of brightness. It was truly impressive and certainly far and away the best that I've seen produced from a VR headset. Okay, let's take a look now at the settings we're running on the Microsoft Flight Simulator side. Okay, so you can see here we're running NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution. This seems to be the best anti-aliasing that I found from Microsoft Flight Simulator, particularly obviously with the 3080 Ti card. The, and that was true to be honest on the previous headset as well, it seems to be the same on the Crystal. In terms of the Super Resolution, the NVIDIA DLSS Super Resolution setting, this one really did change things for me a bit. So I got like five to six extra frames, but more than that, I got a lot more stability. So I found I was getting a lot of frame variation, particularly in this flight and earlier flights flying over Queenstown. Whereas when obviously just a more built up area moving from the water and the hills and there's more trees around Queenstown as well, which obviously adds to the, to the I guess the draw and the pull on the graphics card. So I found that moving to ultra performance didn't do anything noticeable in terms of what I could see, but it certainly seemed to smooth out the variations in the frames and seemed to give me on average a more stable sort of five or six frames as well. So that's a key one that I would recommend people dive into and take a look at in particular. In terms of the uh, other sort of components, you can see there I've got reprojection mode turned off. I've got world scale down at 98%. I've got NVIDIA Reflex low latency is on. And I've got global rendering, rendering quads obviously custom because of what we've got down below. So terrain level of detail 230. Again, let me know what you guys think of this one. Do you notice much difference between these settings? I go from 230 up to sort of 300. It doesn't seem really from what I can see to do make too much difference. Um, but 230 again, I sort of set it there because it's middle of the road and it seems pretty comfortable there. Now I've got the terrain pre at high, I've got terrain vector detail at high, buildings at high as well, because again, I like to fly quite low. I tend to fly bush planes, I tend to fly lighter aircraft rather than you know cruising around in an A380s or anything like that. So for me, I like to have that extra ground level of detail to be a little bit higher. I also really like the look of the clouds. I like to fly through weather, so I always have volumetric clouds at ultra. Again, you may get some more frames if you kick that one down a little bit. I've got the texture resolution there at high as well, anisotropic filtering and texture super sampling. I've got them at 4x and 6x6. Again, that seemed to be a comfortable level. I can't really tell too much difference turning them up or down. What I sort of tried to do to baseline this test is kind of see everything middle of the road and then just slowly notch things up. And if I noticed an improvement when I turned it up, I would leave it there if there wasn't a frame hit, otherwise I turned it down. This is very subjective, my form of testing for these things. It's not by any means definitive or mathematic in how I've done it. So please do take everything with a bit of a pinch of salt. This is what kind of works for me. We've got uh, water and waves, of course, they're high. I've got shadow maps at 102.4 along with the uh, contact shadows as well. And we've got windshield effects uh, at, sorry, contact shadows at high. We've got shadow maps and terrain shadows both at 102.4, contact shadows at high. And windshield effects there are turned to high. I've got ambient occlusion. Now ambient occlusion is one that other thing, other reviews had said plays a big part in the performance hit. Let me know in the comments below, what does ambient occlusion do on your rigs? Do you notice a big impact? You can see in this video, I actually turn it from medium or from low to medium. And I notice maybe a two or three frame hit, but it doesn't seem to be particularly definitive. So again, I need to do a bunch more testing on that and run some benchmarks and really see if ambient occlusion is actually doing anything like visually what it's doing, if I can tell the difference. And then, you know, if it's having an impact on frames. So for now, I think I've left it at medium um, and it just seems to be fine cruising along there. 
In terms of cube map reflections, I've got them at 128. I'm interested to see whether they make a difference too. Again, it didn't seem to make a huge difference, but cube maps play a massive difference in eye racing in terms of the amount of frames you get. They have a huge impact there. So I'm interested to see if it's the same technology or if it's just a similar sounding name. Again, you can tell my approach to the uh, the analysis here is very much that of a sort of user rather than, uh, I guess, a diehard in terms of understanding the technology behind each one of these settings. But again, let me know what you find and let me know if you find that this makes a difference for you guys as well. And then I've got light shafts high because again, I think they look cool. And likewise with Bloom, I want to be able to see the different lighting effects. And as I mentioned, the crystal, it really works brilliantly in terms of lighting effects. Okay, so that's kind of my settings in terms of how I've got it set up. As I mentioned, it's not by any means a scientific approach to optimizing every frame here. What I've done is kind of just benchmarked everything a medium. I've turned up some of the things up to high that I know have an impact on the visual effect and ultimately just tried to get the Pimax Crystal to run really stable and really comfortably around that 50 frames per second mark. The more time we spend doing this, the more I'll start tweaking it, changing it around. And if I find out anything dramatic, I'll let you all know, of course, if we find out any of those settings that have a huge impact, by all means, please do you let me know in the comments section below if there's anything in there that you think I've missed, anything I've overlooked, if there's some of those settings where you've gotten really good gains in terms of the visual quality without having a huge frame hit, or if you think there's anything in there that's inhibiting my frames that I've got too high that I could dial down without losing any of the visual quality, please let me know. I'd love to see it. The, the search for improved frames and improved visual quality is always one that we are that we're always enthusiastically looking towards. Okay, let's dive back in as I come in to land in what will not, I'm sure, be in any way a professional level landing, but what do they say? Every landing you walk away from is a good one, so I guess this one counts. Once again, thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope it's been valuable for you. I hope if you're running a 3080 Ti or a similar PC to mine that this has given you some reassurance that you will be able to get the most out of a Pimax Crystal. This headset continues to delight me. The more time I spend with it, the more I use it, the more I'm enjoying it. It's been um, a pretty stable process all the way through. Look, we did have a few crashes on Microsoft Flight Simulator when we were chopping and changing between some of the settings, when we were moving things around a bit. But once we found the stable build that we've got at the moment, so far it's been rock solid, really comfortable and really stable. So. Again, that's encouraging. It's still early in the firmware cycle. I'm sure that there's a few bugs that they'll still be working on ironing out, but so far our experience with it has been great. Thoroughly enjoying using it. The people I fly with are getting sick and tired of me commenting every five minutes, wow, this thing looks amazing. I'll keep testing. Let me know what you want to see. Please do like, subscribe, comment below. Let us know what future videos you'd like to see. One of the videos we are working on is all about the battery life. So I want to cover in a lot more detail what sort of real world experience we're getting out of the batteries, how long they're running for. I'm going to be setting a timer and recording how long each battery lasts me. I'm going to be recording what sort of charge I get back overnight because as I mentioned it does charge itself when it's plugged in overnight when it's in the headset itself, not to mention obviously the one in the charger. So we're going to cover that in a bunch more detail. I've got a breakdown for you of what all the lights do. So there's a bunch of, there's a couple of colored LEDs on both the charger and on the headset itself. I'll let you know what all of those colors mean and what the, whether they're flashing or whether they're still and what that means for your headset. Uh, let me know if there's any more you'd like me to answer, any questions I can hit you up, or you can hit me up with. We're we'll really happy to deal with them in future videos. Thank you once again. Stay tuned. There's a bunch more Crystal content coming. We'll see you again shortly. Cheers.